Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Evans' Buccaneers going up against Matthews' Bills. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Autumn has come to upstate New York, and we find ourselves at New Era Field in Orchard Park. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon God. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open, but that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think you identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? The Bills' new kicker, Stephen Housh, going to get us going as we are underway from New Era Field. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Tampa Bay coming off that loss to New England last Thursday night. Jameis Winston brings him on the field. He threw for 334 in that game yardage-wise. And also for him, he hasn't thrown an interception since he threw three picks a couple of weeks ago. And all they keep telling him is if he takes care of the football and just lets his talent come to the front, Tampa Bay can be really dangerous. Now, in the game against New England, he was a little inconsistent through three quarters. Missed some targets, missed some open people. But in the fourth quarter, he was lights out. Had his team in a position to win the game. But, boy, their kicking woes got them throughout the game, didn't they? They did indeed, yeah. They were really struggling at the kicking position. First down, Winston. And his first look is incomplete. He was trying to find O.J. Howard. That'll bring up second down. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. On draft night, I have to admit, I was very surprised to see O.J. Howard still available at number 19 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they were shocked, too, because they thought he might go as high as number four in the draft. The perfect combination of being able to block in the line of scrimmage, run downfield, make catches, and run routes and get away from people, they had to take him when he was still available. A second down throw for Winston. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Howard. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. On the defensive side, Buffalo starters here, and looking at the cornerback position, Tredavious White, the rookie out of LSU, he's really been something. In fact, he was named the NFL's Defensive Rookie of the Month for September last month. Really can't start his career much better than what he's done because he's in the vicinity of all the receivers he's covering has 11 pass breakups, which leads the NFL through this early going, has one interception. I have a feeling he's going to translate some of those pass breakups into picks as his career goes on. On third down, Winston. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate. Now it's Tate, and he spins through. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Tyrod Taylor and the rest of the offensive crew trotting out there for Buffalo. They're coming off that loss to Cincinnati last weekend. It was a sloppy game. There was some rain in the area. Taylor finished with under 200 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, but that's, that's usually about where he is. It is, and maybe the rain affected him a little bit, 
but more so, they just couldn't run the football. And Buffalo has to run the ball effectively to maximize Tyrod Taylor's effectiveness. And they had four different ball carriers totaling less than 100 yards in the game in Cincinnati. Now a play fake here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Now let's take a look here at the Bills' offense. Well, the one thing we do know about Buffalo, they love to run the football. Number one in the NFL in 2016 in rushing yardage. Expect that to continue, but look for an upgrade in the passing game. If they add that, they could be really dangerous. Again, now it's Taylor on second and 10. He targets Jordan Matthews, and it's caught. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Taylor to Matthews for the Buffalo first. to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. Looking sideline incomplete. Thomas the intended target. And now it's second down. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. After Quan Alexander was drafted by Tampa Bay, I asked someone in the organization, where are you going to play him? Outside linebacker? And they said, no, we're actually going to play him in the middle. And that surprised me because of his size. But as they told me, this is a speed game in the NFL now. And there won't be any faster middle linebackers than Quan Alexander, who uses his speed to evade blocks, slip blocks, and run down ball carriers. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Gerald McCoy is always going to be linked with Indomitian Sue. They came into the NFL in the same draft class. There's a lot of debate about who is going to be the better defensive tackle. They just do it two different ways. McCoy, more movement, more elusiveness. That allowed him to make the play there for a short game. On third down, Taylor. And Tate's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks, because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now Taylor on first down. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Now let's see who this is on. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Let's go! From the red zone now, here's Taylor on first down. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Here we go. 
Second and 10 now, it's Taylor. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Taylor now to throw on third down. This will be caught at about the six. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Big completion there on third and short. Keeps their opening drive alive. Not only alive, but plenty of possibilities now. First and goal, and you know me. I'm a big advocate. If you're going to throw the ball, throw it early in the down and distance count. And the offense in a great spot. It's first and goal from the three. To throw again is Taylor. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch. But underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And now it's second and goal. They'll try and run it with McCoy. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bills have taken the early lead. We well, got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space, but how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pads? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a LaShawn McCoy touchdown run. now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So Tampa Bay taking over on offense in a second. You know, you mentioned earlier about the kicking woes that they've had. Roberto Aguayo last year, Nick Folk this year. It, the kicking game is just a big-time struggle for them right now, isn't it? It certainly is, and you do hear their head coach, Dirk Cutter, say all the time, that's their job. They're supposed to make kicks. So he doesn't alter his play calling. He doesn't alter his thinking or his strategy to try and work around a kicker. He puts them out there and says, that's your job. Go make it. But guess what? Those kickers have been letting down Tampa Bay for the last two seasons. 66% worst in the NFL on field goals since the start of last year. Now the first carry for Doug Martin. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Winston gives to Martin on the draw. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Call it a loss of two on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. <laughs> hey, 
extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe thinking pass. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He finds Humphreys. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Jameis now on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Kyle Williams with a great push up front. He picks up the sack at a loss of eight. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Jameis on second down. Airing this one out for Evans. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. From the gun, Winston. A dump off to Sims. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down breaks. They'll go again to McCoy. 
And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. The give will go to the fullback, DeMarco. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. And that was a good collision right there. And I know this as a former defender. If you're playing linebacker, you're going through a checklist on every play on who you think's going to get the ball and where you think the ball's going to go. Rarely do you expect the fullback position to get it. And on that play, he did. So you've got to steal yourself at that point because the contact is going to be strong. Schmidt on to punt as he sends it away. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what kind of a play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? They go play action here on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Howard. And he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. O.J. Howard's career numbers at Alabama are not going to blow you away considering his talent. But the national championship game against Clemson, the one they won, oh, my God, yeah. what a night he had. That's the game that I remember from his college career, over 200 yards, two touchdowns. The big reason, if not the biggest reason, they won that football game. down here's the run with Martin and he'll be brought down oh that's a face mask certainly looked like it indeed here come the flags Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. First and ten, Winston. His pass caught at the four. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. will result in him losing yardage back to the three they'll lose a yard and it brings up third Shaq Lawson's one of those guys that after a while you quit just trying to define him by a position defensive end outside linebacker doesn't matter he knows how to get off field and spill some plays so disruptive how, what makes him so disruptive I think it's strength if you see his upper body I mean he's got some strength up there and some really good hands but he's got some surprising quickness as well to get him up field Go, 
Winston on third and two. And that is caught by Jackson for a Buccaneer touchdown. Deshaun Jackson from three yards out. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And here come the Bills. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. He finds an opening past the 40. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. For McCoy in the last seven years, five of them over 1,000 yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Let's go! One, nine. And they'll keep it on the ground with McCoy. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 13 and a Buffalo first down. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. yardage it'll be back at the 36 a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL and that's speed they wanted it every position and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline run past that trash go past people and make tackles near the sidelines not only near the sideline but also in the backfield there for the loss Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. Here we go. One, nine, eight. Taylor now off the bootleg. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. And it's third down. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Come on, let's go! One, nine, nine, nine. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. And before we can get to the field goal try, time will run out on this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score, and we're back to upstate New York after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. And he's going to miss this one. Wide to the left from distance. It's no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, sent this one off target. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Here's Martin as they begin on the ground. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Now a second down throw for Winston. Jackson's got it over the middle. Despite the heavy running, he'll be hit and dropped shy of the 45. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Bucks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Jameis to throw it. And Winston lost the football. A place like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And the Bills getting set to go. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. 
And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They go play action with Taylor. And he finds a man with a crossing round. Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Here we go. On first down, it's Taylor. Here as he's taken down, Gerald McCoy in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. Gerald McCoy's game just translates no matter who is calling the defenses and what defense he lines up in. Inside, outside, his ability to rush the passers is just significant for Tampa Bay. Second down, here's Taylor. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Bills on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and 15. the gun it's Taylor and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact incomplete but no second guessing the call here it was third and long so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up but they don't get it and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation here's Colton Schmidt now on for his second punt he'd take a repeat of his first And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Back near his own goal line, Winston. He's got his man on the crossing route. 23 yards on the play. Well, that was a Deshaun Jackson special, wasn't it? Deep downfield for a big play. But truthfully, if he catches it short, he can turn it into a long gainer, can he? Just such a big play receiver last year. 17.9 yards per catch, and that was tied for the league lead. He's going to open up the offense in a big way in Tampa. Winston with a give to Martin. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. 
Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Second down, Winston. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And now it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Bucks on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Working out of the gun, Winston. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Marcel Darius in there to get him for a loss of three, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect, a passing down. You bring in the nickel package, just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. <laughs> on the return, it's Tate. come the Bills. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game all right? in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now Taylor to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Bills on third down. Two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. From the gun, it's Taylor. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. and 10. It's Taylor. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. A very solid gain of 27. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. 
But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. time to the tailback and down inside the 15 he goes back to back nice gains that one for 14 yards and another first tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line they didn't just gash him there they blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through I think if he comes back to the huddle he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble Try the right side here. And now running right through him. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second down, it's McCoy. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let them down a little bit. They yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff them for a loss. The Bills on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Let's go! One, nine! Ah! From the shotgun, it's Taylor. This is caught. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Come on, let's go! Fans 38! To throw is Taylor. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Now Hausch could attack on the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. Hauschka now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. 
Jameis Winston and company heading back onto the field now. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. They start the drive with Martin, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. throw is Winston. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Winston now to throw on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. The tight end Cameron Brait was the target. And it's second down. A shift gears for a second. You and I are discussing quarterbacks from that 2004 draft class that have maybe fallen off a little bit. Not writing them up, but Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers struggling a little bit this season. They certainly are, and Roethlisberger may be the most glaring because he's on a team that still leads their division. Pittsburgh at 3-2 and two at this point, but he threw five interceptions, two pick sixes in his last outing against Jacksonville. Manning and, of course, Rivers, neither one of their teams likely to make the playoffs. So maybe there's room for the new guard. Maybe a Cam Newton coming in, a Russell Wilson. Yeah, Matt Ryan. Oh, I guess he's been around for a while, but some of those guys, just a changing of the guard yeah. at that position to some degree. Trying to send to the top and maybe some of those younger guys like Marcus Mariota, yeah, Jameis Winston, Winston, Derek Carr. We'll see. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Throwing, Winston. It's caught, Humphreys. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Defensively, they just lost him. He was waving his arms saying, I'm wide open. They found him. Yeah, and it's so interesting about when a receiver starts to wave his arms because some guys, right off the line of scrimmage, they declare themselves open. You know those guys throw the one arm up, right. hit me right now. In this case, he was so wide open that he was frantically trying to get his attention to make sure he got the football. And then I'm sure his only thought when the ball was in the air, don't drop it. Had too much time to think. Now out of the gun. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. Right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard. And it'll be second and 11. Normally that's not the down and distance that you call a draw play. You usually want to wait to second or third down with a definite passing situation before that play is dialed up. Ready? 
From the shotgun, it's Winston. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. On third down, Winston. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Marcel Darius in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Here we go. Final play of the half. It's Taylor. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that is incomplete. So we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being Skip. As we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bills are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Buccaneers won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Bucks line up at the three. Jameis Winston able to get this one in the hands of Deshaun Jackson. And a quick three-play drive ends with a score. Buccaneers tie it up at seven. Now first and ten, Boomer Sooner. Gerald McCoy showing skill here to get to the QB. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Bills with the ball late in the half. Thomas has got nobody around him on the catch, and it leads to a touchdown. That takes the lead up to seven. Thank you, LR. Appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Bills now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And they start the second half with a carry by McCoy. 
And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Second down, Taylor. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that of just about every position. And sometimes, if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. On third down, Taylor. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. <laughs> 51 yards on the punt there. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They try to fire up the running game with Martin. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They run again on first down, Martin. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And a couple of big boys up front defensively. And in that 4-3, those D tackles so vital. Extremely vital. I love how you describe that because if they control things up front, often it's over the guard. Sometimes they slide and make it over the center. It's really hard to get a play started then because a lot of teams want to start inside out running the football. But against a good 4-3, you may not find any space. And on that play, there was zero space, no gain. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. The play fake to Sims. Now Winston. He's going to air one out. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary can really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team that's playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them.
Here's Brian Anger now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Try and get the running game going with McCoy. Rashawn McCoy off to the races. 30, 20, 10, and all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Rashawn McCoy, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Bills will add on to their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game being on the second half no matter what. With his first five minutes, first three, whatever. This was a big score to start the second half. And he'll bang that one through. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Hauschka now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Play fake to Martin. Here's Winston. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time. And it's third down. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this one made perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. The Bucks on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 17. From the gun, Winston. 
And that is incomplete. I would dare say that these guys would have liked to have given their defense a little bit more rest since they gave up a touchdown their last time out. But alas, my man, that's not going to happen. Yep, they're going to have to grab those helmets, get right back out there. Here's Brian Anger now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That's taken on the 25. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. 21 yards. Well done on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off, let him chew up the yardage and big plays, and your team's winning. The only people upset? The fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with the recipe of the ground game. Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Oftentimes when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards. But after a play like that, he may tell them, instead of getting the steaks, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. The Bills on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 11. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down. Go. Operating from the gun, Taylor. And this is going to be incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm got was just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Here's Colton Schmidt now. He's been terrific so far. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. A look at Jameis Winston now as he gears up to lead this offense again. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't. Not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. <laughs> Bringing it in, Jackson left side. And he's brought down after a good game. That one goes for 24 yards. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Ready. 
Winston gives to the tailback Martin. Martin flexing the muscle and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Fresh set of downs here. They run it again with Martin. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now a second down throw for Winston. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! Cameron Bray, 39 yards. And the Bucs have made this a one-score game. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Here's Murray for the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A drive there of just four plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Here now a look at LaShawn McCoy. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. He's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Let's go! Now Taylor on first down. Throw left side complete. It's Holmes. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park.
So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Here we go. Play action. Now Taylor. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Give him 30 yards there. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Taylor from the gun he'll throw and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down let's face it you can run the route tree as many times as you want get in sync practice it do all those things but once you get to game speed it doesn't always time up quite that well that one goes incomplete so incomplete on first let's see what second down has in store They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. Jameis Winston and company heading back onto the field now. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. They go play action here on first down. Aaron this one out for Evans. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Credit the secondary and credit the defensive game plan. They've been in his hip pocket all game long. They understood coming in that he was a big-time receiver. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Jameis to throw it. It's caught by Mike Evans. That one goes for 24 yards. Are we really in the second half here? And this is the first time we've seen Jameis Winston connect with Mike Evans? Yeah, you know that they missed that in the first half. Up until this point, they've really missed it, haven't they? I think that's a big reason why they're down on the scoreboard right now.
Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On first and ten, Winston. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. And on second and ten now. Ready. To the air again with Winston. And that's incomplete. The Bucks on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and ten. Again, it's Winston. He finds Humphreys. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen, but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Not only did they drop what looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Still need 10 yards here to find pay dirt. It's second and goal from the 10. A very valuable nine-yard pickup, and now they're set up a little better here for third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. And this offense on third down today, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and goal. They come out here in the eye. Defense, and now loose football, fumble, Martin lost it. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Patrick Murray now on for the field goal. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. And Murray's kick is up and good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. 
so the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, so no problems converting there. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Pass incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zay Jones that time. And yeah, that'll bring up second down. Now that gives us time here. A little bit of a sad note to pass along that I'm sure most folks have heard. Y.A. Tittle passed away at the age of 97, time pro bowler in the NFL. Phenomenal player. Started his, his career at LSU in college. Moved on to the NFL. Mercifully, his name, Yelberton Abraham, shortened to Y.A. A lot of the guys called him Yat for Y.A. Tittle. But he played in San Francisco, helped popularize the alley -oop pass, which became a, a big-time play in their playbook. With the Giants, three straight championship games. Unfortunately, never won one. But still, big-time player, big-time leader, and he will be missed by the NFL community. The Bills on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Taylor. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. now in Buffalo. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. So here we go, first and ten now. again it's Taylor oh incomplete a turnover would have really helped there almost intercepted instead it's just second down I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there you've got a lead you've got to protect it and he's taking chances putting it out there and a little bit of jeopardy especially in a spot like this fourth quarter as you said trying to cling to that advantage yeah that one probably should have been picked huh Taylor with a give to McCoy. Stops shy of the 45 despite some powerful running. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. 
smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Taylor on third down. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down, so you've got to think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. So out come the Bucks now. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Jameis now on first down. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back at the two. Matt Milano in there to record another sack. They're sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Another tote for the workhorse, Martin. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Now Sims, and he's got room. It's a foot race, the 30. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Charles Sims, 96 yards. And the Bucs have taken the lead here in the fourth. So from three scores down, these guys have fought all the way back to grab the lead. And I'll just tell people what happened when they went up three scores. I wrote on your paper two words, game over, and now I'm eating those words. I, I was wrong. <laughs> a little salt, a little pepper yeah, goes hey, down pretty easily. I, I will admit when I make a mistake. Well, it looked like it was going that way. This is one of those paging Frank Reich moments, and I can't believe I just brought that up because Frank Reich at Maryland in college did it to my Tennessee Volunteers, oh. and I was a big reason why my team lost. Sounds like he still harbors some pain from that game. You know, we still got a little time to work it out with the doctor. <laughs> The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. 
The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. First down, it's Taylor. Got his man complete over the middle. That's McCoy. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Ten yards still left on second down. Here we go. Bad 38. Off the play fake. Here's Taylor. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Kendall Beckwith coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack, although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. Third and long, Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Let's go! Brad 38! Brad 38! Brad! From the shotgun, it's Taylor. It's caught, Tolbert. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40. A good pick up there at 22. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So the offense has it first and ten. gun it's Taylor throwing middle but it's incomplete he was trying to get it to LaShawn McCoy and that'll bring up second down second down following the incompletion Throw again, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look, six DBs. To throw again is Taylor. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line.
Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Now they had to go the length of the field last time out to get into the end zone. And with this starting field position, they're going to have to pretty much do it again. And I think the thought process going into it is, hey, if you have to be methodical, go ahead and do that. But what you really want are a couple of big plays. Eat up chunks of yardage and cut down the number of times you have to snap the football. And tough starting field position here. And off comes to Martin. And an alley to run. There goes Doug Martin. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. The 20. 10. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Doug Martin, 96 yards. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Here's Murray for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. down with Taylor he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete looks like the defense in press coverage here It's Taylor. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. And let's see the box with six DB, so a dime set here on third down. Here's Taylor, operating from the gun. Open man is Holmes. And the athleticism on the spin move allows him to pick up the first before he's brought down. A very solid gain of 27. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Let's go! 
from midfield now. Here's Taylor. And he'll check this one down to McCoy. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They'll give him eight on the play, and it's a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Operating from the gun, Taylor. Oh, no, he lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. And this is one of those bang-bang plays, Charles. Did the knee hit first or did the ball come out first? This is where you need that 20-20 eyesight, don't you, Brandon? You've got to see which one happened first. If the knee hit the ground, then they will keep possession. So the offense avoids disaster, keeps possession. Now it's second down. Come on, let's go. Brian 38. Brian 38. To throw is Taylor. From the gun, he'll throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Thomas. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Come on, let's go. Watch that. They'll run it now out of the gun. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. From the gun, Taylor going to drop this off to McCoy, complete. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, let's go. 
on first and ten. It's Taylor. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Give to McCoy. And he'll get this one down to about the 10 yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Hauschka's kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. to the main field goal. Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. A first down throw for Winston. Right side caught by Jackson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. They give to Martin. Martin flexing the muscle. There goes Doug Martin. 20, 10, and he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Doug Martin with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Here's Murray for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. 
So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes LaShawn McCoy as he trots back out there now. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Now Taylor throwing on first down. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Second down now after the incompletion. Taylor throwing again. Going to throw right side here. Complete. That one goes for 24 yards. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Taylor now on first and 10. Left side caught by Matthews. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. It's lining up first and ten. Now Taylor with a draw to McCoy. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. Here's Taylor to throw. And he's got some space here. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Here's Taylor operating from the gun. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. 
Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Hauschka now for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. So a seven-point game, they'll need a recovery, the touchdown, and an extra point to tie. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Carry number 20 here for Martin. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call the timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. will take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They run. Martin. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Murray's kick is up and good. And that will extend their lead even further. So barring something extraordinary, something crazy here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Brandon, this will be a great win for them. The better team's going to win this game, no question about it. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Taylor. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. Matthews, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Got to be wary of throwing an interception here because the defense knows they're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Here we go. Now it's Taylor. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Buffalo.